uh, an infamous mukbang YouTuber who goes by the name Nick Akato Avocado recently debuted a dramatic amount of weight loss and revealed that he has been doing a social experiment on his following for the past year while he was behind the camera losing all of the weight that he gained from being a professional eater. <laughs> so he lost 250 pounds while posting pre-recorded content the entire time leading everyone to believe that he has been obese the entire time. And he did the big reveal at the end of this social experiment to show everyone that he's back to being skinny again. Yep. Um, I don't know if this is inspirational or terrifying or just, just a moment in internet history. It's a, it's a moment in internet history. It definitely <laughs> is. Like all the people that we interact with that are pretty terminally online had a take He's on He's a lol this. cow. Yeah. He, he is one of the most infamous lol cows, which is why this is like him trying to turn the tables on everyone who thought that he was the butt of the joke. He's like, hey, actually the joke's on you. I tricked you. What I want now more than anything, and I'm skipping to the end here. I want a <laughs> montage of him getting in shape to Eye of the Tiger. I just, I want to know, I don't think it was Ozempic because he's so crazy that he wants to suffer it. Like he wants to suffer through it. So you don't think he- The had, organic you, you way. You don't think that he took a shortcut. You think he actually did it- No, I, I genuinely way. think he did the work and he, he took the time without the help of Ozempic. So let's just watch a clip from his big reveal video. This, uh, just, he has uh, like a whole monologue. This one? Yeah. Okay, here we go, guys. Anything that they're told to consume. <laughs> like, bro, you're making this big reveal and you've got the worst audio I've ever heard. Why does it it's sound like the there's- ASMR audio. Why does it sound like there's a box fan right by the camera <laughs> mic? So I am the villain. <laughs> because I've made myself one. And you will continue to consume these stories about me year after year after year for as long as I tell the internet that I am the villain. <laughs> stories that permeate and linger and infect the minds of the ants, influence the ants, brainwash the ants. There's some Gomer Pyle energy going. Are the ants? Today I woke up from a very long dream. <laughs> and I also woke up having lost 250 pounds off of my body. Yet just yesterday, people were calling me fat and sick. <laughs> and boring and irrelevant. People. People are the most messed up creatures on the entire planet. And yet I've still managed to stay two, two steps, steps ahead. ahead. This is the best part. <laughs> He just does the Kubrick stare yeah, at the end. 7.62 millimeter full metal jacket. So um, <laughs> he was the evil mastermind. Okay. What? Okay. I, the whole time. Can we just ask the question? What was the experiment? That's a really good question. Like just because you <laughs> deliver the line in a quasi creepy way doesn't mean you did an experiment. Show me the research, my friend. I want to see People the data. People are like, so tell me how you posting a picture of your inflamed butthole was part of the master plan here. Yes. <laughs> how you uh, starting a gay OnlyFans was like actually part of your your performance art, bro. There's a, a picture, a before and after picture if people are looking for... Yeah, um, he, he was, you know, quite large. People were worried that he was cutting his life short because can we get, he dedicated like, himself so fully to his mukbang lifestyle you know what that we need, he was, though? you know, on death's door. I have a way that we can do this in an actually, like beneficial manner for society. We need to do this going the other way with Eugenia Cooney, where she needs to gain the weight and get healthy. And Oh my goodness. And she needs to do her own social experiment that gets her into good shape because she is deathly skinny and it's terrifying. We, That's yeah. what we need. 
We've talked about her before. She yep. is also interesting. I think that she's just as self-aware as Nick Akato. She's just better at pretending like she's not. Yeah. It's kind of an evil mastermind in her own right. Well, that's the thing. Like, just because, you're, and here's the thing, just because you're an evil mastermind doesn't mean you have a great delivery. I don't think that the evil speech was all no. that well cast, delivered. Cast Nick Akato as the, as the Riddler. Get rid of the other guy. I, I, he has star power. Do you think he had to have the skin, like, uh, cut? I don't know. I, he has fluctuated in weight quite a lot. What's funny is I first came across Nick Akato when he was a vegan YouTuber. He was a vegan influencer. I didn't he know made that. all of these videos about veganism and it was this huge dramatic moment in the, you know, vegan YouTube community back when that was a thing when he ditched veganism for his health, he said. <laughs> and then eventually over time, you know, he became a morbidly obese mukbanger and people were like, hmm, doesn't seem like it was really about your health. Yeah. It was about your clout. Wait, and what did they say? They said um they, they said, said you were never a real vegan. That is some creepy shit. When yeah. You told me that. I said I said even religious people don't say that. Every time that I say I was a former or like I formerly was vegan, especially if it's on Twitter where people name search mm. vegan, <laughs> and all of these vegans just flood me with comments saying you were never a real vegan because you never really believed it in your heart. It you know, it wasn't a religion for you, therefore you were never part of the club. Do people say this when somebody becomes a lapsed Catholic? No. In fact, what they say in those cases is that you're still Catholic yeah. <laughs> because it's an indelible mark on your soul. Yeah. But for them, if you weren't a true believer, you would, you know, if you were a true believer, you would have never left. Yeah. Right. That's their. So belief. this would be more like something that would happen in a cult. Like yeah. if, you, if you left a cult and they were like, you were never a true believer. But he just moved from what, what, one form of crazy to the next to the next. And he's always two steps ahead. This is his mantra. So there was another part of this video where he was, you know, back at his old weight, talking about the social experiment that he was performing. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to watch that Wait, as do well. Do we have, uh, I, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm missing that one. Maybe resend that one to me. Um, is, it, um, is it in the same one? It's is the last thing in our messages. Okay, hold on one second, guys. I gotta double check. He's here. always two steps ahead. Okay, yeah, I don't have that one. This one. Hold on one second here. Let's put this way. I like this comment. It says, "It's so funny that people are calling this a redemption arc, as if he got fat from killing kids or something." <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't know. I don't think that's what happened. Here we go. Ahead. I am always two steps ahead. This has been. Well, he's got the Dracula hair. Mm -hmm. the, the greatest Powerful. social experiment I've come to know. Certainly the greatest social experiment my entire life. It's alluring. It's compelling. It's gripping to bear witness, to observe all <laughs> these unwell, unbalanced, disoriented beings roam the internet in search of stories, in search of ideas, of conflict, of rivalries, where people develop a distinctive desire for direct engagement, where people feel involved with the stories and therefore become product of influence, spoiling their minds while stimulating them at the exact same time. It's brilliant, but it's also dangerous. I feel as if my life has been positioned to where I'm monitoring ants. One <laughs> follows another, follows another, follows another. It's, it's mesmerizing. Just look at all these consumers, all of these lost and bored people. I mean, you should have somebody write his evil villain speeches. Consuming anything that they're told to consume. I am the villain. I make myself one. Today, I thought it would be a splendid idea to go out and get some food. Gee, are you surprised? <laughs> Have you forgotten the story? Are you not paying attention? After all, you're here to consume. Are you not? Like, I, I can't help but stand. I can't. I can't help but stand. 
uh, in the chat, Crocs with socks says this guy is a psychopath. Uh, what I think you're at, what what's your what I think you're actually looking at here is the mindset of somebody who is outside the realm of consuming content and into the realm of creating content and putting the most absurd over the top spin on what it's like to direct your audience towards a certain direction. Well, no, what he's trying to do, I don't know if he's doing it successfully, but what he's trying to do is put up a mirror to his audience because mm -hmm. he's consuming food, but they're consuming mm -hmm. him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're like <laughs> gorging themselves on content and he is gorging himself on ramen. Mm. So it's kind of an, I actually do think he's getting at an interesting dynamic, talking yeah. about audience capture. And he is, I mean, he's yes. obviously very smart. There is, there is an <laughs> argument or a discussion to be had about audience capture. Yes. It's like you find that one thing that works and then you have to stick with it lest your audience fall off. It's actually something that, like one of the things that we have for our channel is like we cover such a weird array of things like we don't specialize in any one area yeah it's like the channel isn't all videos about disney it's not all video like we talk we cover everything from disney and movies we cover taylor swift and chapel roan we talk about dating we talk about social media trends all that stuff and that can hurt because it's harder to grow a dedicated audience when you don't have that there's niche. not as much of a niche right yeah. so it's it's easier to avoid audience capture there i have no desire like there have been times where I'm like we should cover this and, be, and nobody cares and i kind of like that because it means i can talk about whatever we find interesting that given day and the people that watch this show will tune in hopefully get something out of it at the very least be entertained for a couple of hours but i don't feel like we have to cover it like today we were like should we cover the new stuff with diddy we're like does anybody care right like, does anybody is, care like, is like i really... don't care like uh we we covered it through the cassie stuff do we want to go into it like i'm not chasing numbers well, for any specific topic i i will not say who because i'm sure this has happened mm -hmm. multiple times but we've watched other channels and the, the channels that tend to cover very specific mm -hmm. niche topics mm -hmm. in a you know a very specific wheelhouse and the way they report on things the way they talk about things it's just it's a little bit clownish sometimes over the top. like it's over the top it's it's a little ridiculous but and then, it's like the bravado that they bring to it you can tell is inauthentic and is meant to engagement bait and rage bait people and you know that's a form of audience capture too so it's like you can you can act like you're better than nick Akato, avocado but you know at the end of the day anyone is liable to yeah. get into the, the mode of performing the way they feel they're expected to. And like, that is, yeah, kind of demeaning. I don't actually have the, that ability. Like I, like I can get excited about specific things, right? But I can't fake that with things that I don't care about. Mm -hmm. like, like I can't do that. Like when we, we did, we talked about the crow and I had a lot to say about the crow. I can't bring that same energy to freaking Beetlejuice. You can't, can't faux cause outrage. Because I, I don't care. Which is a good thing and yeah. a bad thing. It depends on what you're going for. Yeah. Here were a couple of reactions. One said, he pre-recorded years worth of videos while secretly losing all of his weight as a social experiment, raking in a bunch of attention and money. Not gonna lie, he's kind of a genius. This was his Machiavellian scheme to get to views get and money. Yeah. And then just as people were getting tired of his old form of content he did his big reveal where he could turn it all around and people would get interested again and that is one of the hardest things to do is when you found something that works is pivoting and doing something else that there that is not to be understated how difficult that is like i wouldn't be willing to get morbidly obese mm -hmm. for content but in a way, I sort of have to respect the grind, the like best, the commitment to the bit yeah. that he has shown. Well, no, like everything that he's talking about here requires a lot of commitment, right? Like mm -hmm. committing to doing this over a period of time. And self-discipline. And, and the self-discipline yeah. to actually make a physical Ironically. change. Hold off, not just that, but hold off on making any posts that show any of the progress that you've made, which I'm sure was tempting to do from time to time. He's a he's a creator. It's he's, um, the sociopathy that we have been talking about the sociopathy that you either need to be born with or you need to develop in order to be a successful influencer because he posted 
years worth of pre-recorded content where he is acting like a morbidly obese clown for likes, putting on an act, and he had to be totally okay or neutral about the fact that people were mocking him endlessly for it. Yeah. And he had to be okay with people not knowing the truth and people not knowing that this was all a social experiment and that he was actually planning to show his weight loss. Like he had to be at peace with the fact that he was a lol cow. It's one Most of those, people yeah. would not be able to do it. It's one of those things where like when you start making a change, you get like you want to talk about it because you're it gets you pumped up. Yeah. And it's very hard to not do that. It's like they say, if you're if you want to do something, don't tell anyone about it, because even the act of telling somebody about something you want to do, it kind of satiates your brain Saps and, your motivation. and prevents you from actually working on it. So the best thing you can do is to keep it to yourself and just work on it. So and this is what the, Lizzo is doing. Yeah, I mean, not really, because she made the post about it. Well, once she she's made on a post her hiatus, about, right? she made a post about taking a year off. Imagine if she had taken the year off and then just came back. Skinny that would be Lizzo. better. Yeah. Uh, another one said Nick Acado, Avocado was never spiritually fat. He's a classically trained violinist. He understands discipline and was never out of control. It's been a fairly obvious Kaufman esque performance art since the beginning. Andy Kaufman would be very proud. <laughs> I want to see... So Jim Carrey I, can make this movie. <laughs> I want to see Nick Accato and Jim Ben Carey. Shapiro have a violin off. I think that would be incredibly entertaining. They can do that. Devil went down to Georgia. And whoever loses has to gain 250 pounds. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about Fat Ben Shapiro. I feel that like the, would be... I feel like the memes would get created. It's like Fat Ben Shapiro isn't real. Fat Ben Shapiro can't can't hurt you. That would be crazy. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.